This is the story about our trip to beautiful Palawan Island in the Philippines. I wasn't sure if I should tell it honestly or just show the beautiful beaches and tasty food and leave out the troubles we had. But unfortunately what we experienced on Palawan recently was a local woman screaming at us and the guy coming with a machete to help intimidate us. And believe me, I'm not making this up. I had my GoPro camera and recorded part of it, which you will see later in the video. And our first boat tour went great, but unfortunately the second one was not what we expected. And before leaving a comment, I would kindly ask you to watch the last part of the video too, where we share our overall impressions of the trip. We are Olga and Rene. After spending one year in Turkey, we are now exploring Southeast Asia, comparing costs of living, infrastructure and making videos for people who are thinking to relocate. After five days in Manila, we flew to Palawan via the airport in Puerto Princesa. The flight is short and it doesn't cost much. After we landed, we got a minivan that we booked via the hotel in Port Barton, our first destination on Palawan. The trip went smooth and when we arrived to the bus station, we could get a tricycle for only 50 pesos that would take us to the hotel. I didn't film there much because we went to Palawan mainly to have a small honeymoon one year later from when we actually got married. But Port Barton had such a cute small village vibe that I just couldn't resist and made videos here and there. Especially after the busy Manila, it really felt nice and relaxing to be there. And we got this local restaurant recommended and I will put the locations in the description as we enjoyed the food there a lot. In fact, in another recommended restaurant, we had one of the best pizzas ever. Close to the beach, there is also a small market where you can get all the beach essentials. And when we needed water or snacks, we could get it at one of the shops like this. There was also a pharmacy along the road where you could get some basic medicine. Overall, even though Port Barton is just a small village, you can find everything there. We even saw ATMs at the restaurants. Next to the beach, you can find hotels, restaurants and of course rent a kayak. So here we are getting closer to the not so good part of the story. So we rented a kayak and paddled to the coconut beach nearby as it was recommended by the guys who actually rented us the kayak, the locals. And actually Rene was already in Port Barton some years ago, so he also remembers going to that beach. So when we arrived to the coconut beach, uh, immediately a local man approached us and asked to pay him money as this is a private property. And because Rene doesn't remember anyone asking for money before, we started asking him who owns this beach and if he can give us a ticket or show some official paper. And we didn't get much of a reply other than he started to say that he doesn't really understand what we want and he is just doing his job. And as you can see in the video, there are no signs for private property and the guys who rented us the kayak, they also did not tell anything about it. Um, since since when? 2000? <laughs> since 2015, 16? Yeah. How long is 2002, sir. Because I remember when I was here in like 2017, yeah. nobody asked me for money. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, sir, but I'm mm -hmm. okay. I said my boss that not to pay the entrance, so not allowed to stay here yeah. like this. Yeah, so your boss has to send the police. <laughs> no problem, you call the police. No problem, no problem. We have a three person in the last day, you call the police. You're coming to coming yeah. this police, no problem. We have yeah. explain the police if you call. No problem. So, do we want to stay here or we 
Yes. Mm. All people mm. think we have an insurance fee. Mm -hmm. No, I understand, yeah. but maybe then the police can tell us that we have to pay. If the police tell us to pay, and give us a ticket. <laughs> then we will pay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call the owner this bit. So this guy just went away and a minute or two later, the woman came. She started saying that this is her private property and pointing at other tourists on the beach that every one of them has paid her. So we have to do it too. We asked again for the ticket or any papers. She of course said no. I got more happy folder and give the fifth passage for entrance. Mm. Here's the both of you, you didn't forget. You just go now, you just leave. Yeah. You leave? No, I'm not no. leaving because this is my property. Oh. Why, why you leave me? This is a really good. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> You just live here now. You're so rich. You have coal for you for yourself. So rich. Yes, of course, <laughs> because this is my primary family <laughs> property. But you cannot show anything. Why I show you anything? You can ask in Fort Barton. Why you tell? No, <laughs> hmm? we're here, not Fort Barton. Fort Barton is there. Many people, Fort Barton, who knows or who's the people or the owner of this no, place? But they did not tell us. For water, you can also ask like 100 pesos. And people are paying it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Don't let him come too close with the machete. <laughs> yeah. I'm not worried. Nobody wants trouble like this. Yeah. For a hundred pesos. So what happened here in the footage is that uh, she saw that we are not leaving and not giving her m any money. So she called the guy with a machete so he would come closer to make her more intimidating as just screaming at us didn't help. She didn't seem crazy or under influence or anything like that. She just wouldn't accept that we are not paying her. So in the end, when we saw that guy, we decided to just leave it as it is because it didn't feel very safe anymore. And even with tourists around, you just never know what might happen. I decided to blur out the woman's face in the footage because uh, we don't want any trouble for her. We are just tourists who will leave the country and she is a local who stays and this is her home. We don't know her situation and why is she behaving like this because from what I could find online is that uh, the beach itself in the Philippines cannot be a private property. Also, as I said, there was no fence and guys who rented us the kayak never said it is a private beach while recommending us to go there. So I would say that if you will find yourself in a situation like this in the Philippines or in any other country, then of course the easiest way is just to pay the fee and not go into the argument. But at the same time, if everyone just keeps paying, then this type of problem just continues existing, which ultimately hurts the tourism. So I feel like to fix this issue, we need to talk about it. So we arrived the home safely and actually at our hotel it was really easy to communicate with other guests and that was one of the benefits of a small hotel in Port Barton. And next day we booked a boat tour at the hotel itself. And I would recommend going on such a tour for everyone to not just see beautiful beaches but also to connect with other travelers who are doing the same tour. Our first stop was the Starfish Island. And in some other videos made by influencers on Instagram or even on YouTube, I do see that people touch the starfish. And to preserve the starfish, we as tourists should never touch it. 
Next on the boat tour was snorkeling and the price of the snorkel was included in the tour price. As you can see, it's a great and fun experience and unfortunately I didn't catch on camera that there are also beautiful fish in the water. Next stop is lunch on the beautiful beach. Don't expect to be alone on the beach as other boats also stop there and also have food. And you might have to wait a bit for the food itself, but it is totally worth it. You will enjoy the beach for about 30 to 60 minutes. And later the crew serves you with a variety of seafood, meat, rice, fruit and vegetables. It is truly amazing how they can serve such a good lunch in the middle of nowhere. By the way, important tip is don't forget to reapply the sunscreen. Or even better, wear a shirt or special swimwear that covers your whole body. The sun is very hot and you will spend a lot of time during the day in the sunshine. We ourselves were not careful enough and burnt our backs during snorkeling because we didn't reapply the sunscreen. After Port Barton, next day we take another minivan to famous El Nido. This time Renee booked a hotel right on the beach and we even got a free upgrade to a bigger room. And just outside our window we had this very beautiful lunch area and seeing the sunset from our balcony was truly a once in a lifetime experience. For dinner we again asked a recommendation at the hotel and the manager recommended a really nice restaurant. The restaurant had all kinds of Asian food as well as Western food. interior design and the atmosphere, the ethnic music, it was really nice and relaxing there. It was even so nice that we ended up having dinner there and the next day too. We ordered chicken and the fish. I would say that this restaurant for us was one of the highlights of El Nido. What we found out that the side street where the restaurant is, is actually more or less a restaurant bar street in El Nido. When we walked, we saw some more restaurants and bars, as well as some small shops. So next day we are gonna do what we came to El Nido for, is go on a boat tour. We got picked up by a tricycle and brought to the pier. As you can see, many, many more people decided to do the same, to go on a boat tour that day. And at first it was a bit overwhelming, there were so many people, we didn't know how do we get to the boat that we are going to. But in the end, uh, the people who are managing this, they organized it quite efficiently and they give you the name of the boat and then they shout uh, that name, so then you hear it and just follow them and they take you to the boat. I must say that uh, there are of course fixed the prices for the tour but additionally you really want to rent uh, water shoes and the snorkel. As you can see getting on the boat might be a bit tricky but overall it's not too difficult. But I would say going on a boat tour it is best if you actually can swim. Because I do remember that uh, out of about 10 to 12 people on the boat one person could not swim. So what we were hoping for is to see the beautiful lagoons that are included in the tour. 
what actually happened is that uh, the weather was not so nice. It was really windy and the initial forecast was that it is going to be like that. But still the tours uh, decided to go through with it. They were not cancelled. So what we experienced is that we couldn't actually visit the most popular locations. We were only brought to a couple of beaches and on the beach itself it was very windy. So unfortunately we didn't get to enjoy the trip fully. Quite the wind. Yeah. Sand dunes. That's quite the weather today. The crew still tried to do their best and take us to at least some locations, but if we are completely honest, we probably would prefer if the tour was cancelled and we would just spend the day enjoying El Nido. We again had lunch included in the trip and again the lunch was really good. We had quite some variety of seafood and fruits, noodles and rice, as well as vegetables too. So by the end, there was almost no food left. Everyone ate it. It was so tasty. I do hope one day we can return and uh, we will be more lucky with the weather so we do get to see everything that is El Nido famous for. Back home we are going again by the tricycle and actually this way we get to see a bit more of El Nido. Now we are back home again and we again did a walk by the beach, went to the same restaurant as I already mentioned. And next day we got to have a breakfast at our hotel right at the terrace. What would I choose, Port Barton or El Nido? And this is El Nido, you saw our hotel already. My choice would be Port Barton. Despite what happened there, the situation with the machete, I mean, stuff like that happens everywhere. So that wouldn't put me off coming to Port Barton again for sure. Port Barton gave me a feeling of a more village vibe. And here it's livelier for sure, but overall I don't, you can say that El Nido is more developed, there are more restaurants, more cafes and stuff like that, but in Port Barton we did find two good restaurants that even made like, good pizza and good local food and we were not suffering from having nothing to eat, so I would say like three, four days we could easily have stayed there and enjoyed and relaxed. You can get a bike there and drive around, you can rent a canoe like we did, just don't go to Coconut Island without paying. Overall it felt really relaxed and it was easy to connect with people there and here in El Nido it's more of a vacation place, everyone's on holiday, we did talk to many people on the boat but apart from that in a hotel it's not so much <laughs> and even though yeah it's just more of things here, it's not cleaner, it's not uh, more maintained or anything like that so I wouldn't go for El Nido just because it's more developed. No, El Nido is also more expensive than Port Barton yeah, overall from what we see. Definitely, almost double prices at the restaurants, although food here is also very good in good restaurants, but yeah, you get what you pay for. 
if you want good food, you have to pay almost double from Port Barton. Yeah, and also the tour in Port Barton, it was a bit more expensive in the beginning than this tour here. In the end, we paid much more and we probably would even had a not as great of an experience as in Port Barton. Yeah, so. for now we will never know, I guess, because... <laughs> Yeah, well, here the whole attraction of this place is not the beach because the beach so far we see is not very swimmable, but the actual tours to see all the beautiful bays. And if the weather is good, and we've been told that April is the high best season month. with most tourists, but also the best weather, not the sea is not rough. No, the sea is really calm and everything. Yeah, so that's probably the best time to go, but outside those months uh, you might be lucky with the weather and you will see those beautiful lagoons and we hope to see them one day but for example yesterday we only saw like three locations like two beaches three beaches oh the guys are quite loud <laughs> also filming something yeah so we saw only those two beaches we had uh, great lunch but aside from that on the beach there was a strong wind and the sand in your face on like everywhere on your whole body <laughs> and it's like a sand dune so, <laughs> or something like that so being on the beach was not nice no, being in the sea yeah the sea was really rough indeed yeah, yeah. i mean for me it wasn't nice renee liked it he liked the rough sea <laughs> I do indeed, um, but I can imagine that for most people it's no no fun and the visibility yeah. in the water was also around zero, so in yeah. the end you, you're we not seeing the snorkel, anything. We paid for the snorkel, we didn't use it. So yeah, overall we spent more money and because we were not lucky with the weather, we saw less. So the best advice, I think, uh, I mean, our assumption that uh, the captain and the crew already knows that the sea today is not the greatest there is a forecast like renee saw the fo forecast no they even uh, the coast guard uh, at first wanted to cancel all tours but then yeah. they decided to only cancel tour c and the other three they did yeah so yeah people still hoping to make money on the day it's understandable philippines are going through rough times with the typhoons and people do need help but I mean, for us, it's also a concern of safety. I mean, if the sea is rough and something happens in the sea, I mean, you're risking your life, your health, and as well as you don't get to see all the beautiful lagoons and you're risking your own life. So that should be a concern for yourself when you're planning such a tour. Definitely. Yeah. At some point, I remember that uh, we almost hit the rocks even. Mm -hmm. the side I of the boat. I didn't see. <laughs> so I'm just happy go lucky not knowing <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the captain had to scramble the boat to get out of there to not hit the rocks. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. I think uh, we as tourists should find other ways to help people in the Philippines. Maybe go to really nice restaurants here. Uh, don't don't uh, try to save money. If you have money, yeah, go to nice restaurants, maybe to nice bars, nice hotels. Time. So I would still recommend going to Philippines for a holiday for beautiful nature. And yeah, another thing is, also, of course, in Palawan, the internet, the Wi-Fi in hotels, it's like almost non-existent. So at least buy some data, which is also not the greatest, but for our experience, at least it gives us some internet, some data. Well, Sometimes. for me, it also adds to the experience. I mean, we <laughs> that you get to switch off. <laughs> yeah, we uh, for our work we need internet a lot, um, but here you don't really have much mm. internet. And then at some point you realize, at first you s you keep trying to get <laughs> on the internet, and then at some point you're like, yeah, what am I actually trying to do? I better do other things right yeah. now. So that's the yeah. positive thing about it. So I you think. get to disconnect from all the distractions and just enjoy the nature and here well in El Nido even though, though the beach is not for swimming it was nice to have a walk by the beach in the evening and there are many many beach restaurants and they all seem very good they will not be the cheapest by Filipino standard but uh, still you I mean we spent about 25 euro for two without heavy drinking <laughs> but even the drinks uh, the beer is really cheap so yeah, and the food was really good. I and mean. the food, yeah. So that's part of the nice experience here. There is no, I think there is no like heavy partying here. I didn't see, didn't see any like 
big bars. I saw like small cute bars where people would just uh, sit around the bar and just chat with each other, but no clubs or anything like that. But yeah, if you want to party like that, uh, I guess go to Manila. <laughs> <laughs> Manila or probably Sabututs. Overall, we still enjoyed our trip to Palawan and good experiences surely outweigh the bad ones. And we think that most people in the Philippines are friendly and kind and respectful. We never assume that if we have been mistreated by a person from a, a certain country, that everyone from that country is uh, the same. And if you're a Filipino, please know that we do see how most people in the Philippines are respectful and treat us with kindness and not like the lady that we met on the beach. And when everything bad that happens is just swept under the carpet to create uh, an illusion of a perfect paradise, then the existing problems will never be fixed. Philippines is still a paradise, just not perfect. And actually nowhere in the world is perfect and that's completely okay. We ourselves are traveling full time and because of that we are used to things going sideways from time to time and we just try to learn from the experience while still appreciating the fun and enjoyable part of traveling as well as the hospitality of locals.